for the first installment getting into the gear of the Grand Traverse, uh, we're gonna talk about just the individual hard goods. This is the most fun part and the stuff that most people probably have dialed, uh, but there's plenty of tricks and things to think about here. So on the table here, we have a little bit of Cam's personal gear, a little bit of mine. Uh, let's talk skis first, Cam. Yeah, so skis, um, a lot of folks will use what we now call like schemo skis or any like 65 underfoot, lightweight, um, 160 centimeter or so racing ski, but people will do it on any other um, touring gear as well or Nordic gear yeah. a little bit still. Yeah, some holding. people <laughs> still do it on Nordic gear. Of course, you have to carry an extra binding because that stuff does tend to break. Cam's on the DinaFit DNA ski, which is their like premier race ski. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, weighs about 700 grams, mm -hmm. 6,500 foot. Yep, exactly. And no matter what your ski is, I think the important thing is to give all of your gear a good look over before the race. So I'm going to check my ski, make sure there's no splits and cracks on the top sheet and sidewalls, make sure I don't have any missing bits of edge or any other holes that I need to seal, um, check over my bindings and make sure there's no cracks anywhere. And like I might have mentioned in the video you saw earlier, if I would have seen that crack before my race, I might have been able to save my event, but I just didn't notice the, the small issues. Uh, a lot of times, if you're, we'll link a, a full blog post on how to check over your own gear uh, in the video, but we'll also like bring it to a local shop. They can give it a once over, but this could really, really save your night. Um, you know, I brought a much older DinaFit ski this is the Dina Fitzroy Oyu ski that I've had for probably like seven or eight years. The reason I want to bring this is this is kind of the biggest ski I would really recommend doing the Grand Traverse on. Uh, it's 89 under foot, 182 long. Uh, sometimes people show up in much, much bigger gear and they would pay almost any amount of money to trade it out the day of. Of course, that's too late. So it's just something good to think about ahead of time. Uh, rent a skinnier ski if you're used to skinning on something much bigger but one of the things is that there's cutoffs to kind of keep you safe you can muscle your way with big skis past the, the first cutoff but once you're past that it, you know you could be in a lot of serious trouble uh, so this will make going with a ski like this will make your night much much safer uh, you know, the bindings on there, those are the low tech races by DinaFit. They weigh 105 grams. So it just gives you an idea of how light you can really go, especially noticeable with the boots. So what boot is this? So this is the Pierre Genou DNA, um, and you don't necessarily need to go with a full carbon boot to finish the Grand Traverse, but this is an example of like a higher end yeah. racing boot. And Doug has a more um, kind of typical racing. Yeah, this is the Alien 1.0. So only maybe 150 grams heavier than that. The reason I like to show this is I did the Grand Traverse in the older version of those boots uh, on a very cold year, and I got frostbite pretty bad because the, the carbon really conducts uh, cold. Cam might not ever sacrifice going with a heavier <laughs> boot, but with me, with having access to both boots, I would definitely recommend at least a real plastic lower if you look at the weather forecast ahead of time and it's gonna be cold. Uh, so that's boots, binding skis. And same thing there, give your, your boots a good look over, make sure any like cords that you have are in good shape. I was actually um, gonna show that on or... mine. Yeah. You can see that this walk mode gets like pretty wiggly and loose. If you lose that walk ski mode in the night, it, it's gonna be a really sad descent on Star Pass. And a lot of these things are really easy to fix, but not necessarily easy to fix within 48 hours of the race if you need to get gear from somewhere yeah. as well. So. So easily one of the most important pieces that could cost you the most are your climbing skins. So Cam brought a pair of pink pomokas. Um, you know, how many pairs of skins would you bring in a race? I wouldn't consider bringing less than two. I usually have a third or like you might have a third pair between the two of you. So like five pairs total on your team. It's just a really silly way to ruin your race if your skins start to fail and you're your glue out there in the middle of the night in the alpine in the dark gets icy and cold and none of your skins are sticking anymore. It's, um, it's an easy way to lose your race. Yeah, and there's some wisdom of using like a skinnier skin on the flatter parts of the course. 
Uh, we used to really cut our tails short. People have been kind of moving away from that because if you struggle and redline yourself, even going up a slight hill because your skins are super slippery, that's really gonna cost you down. Uh, this is something I think is super underestimated and I brought it, same skins Cam have, they're actually cut for the DNA skis. This is just a $6 Camp Contour Shark Tail Clip. Super cheap piece of gear and it just goes on with like vice grips or like a hammer. And you have a tail clip on a race ski or on a race skin and then there's almost no chance for failure at that point. So if you're newer to the sport, this takes a lot of stress out of your night. Um, so just something to consider. Definitely extra pairs, not mandatory yet, but if, if you really want to hedge your bet and have a good race, pack an extra pair. Mm -hmm. And same thing, like the tail clips give you a massive margin for error, like those will really never fail, but adding some fresh glue or using a newer skin can give you a better chance for success as well. Yeah, expect your skins to get a little torn up in this race mm -hmm. though. Uh, let's look at the helmet. Yeah. You brought one over here. Uh, camp helmet, uh, we still allow bike helmets, but definitely need uh, head protection. And this is not something that goes on the pack. It's something that meant to be worn. Uh, so have a good helmet figured out. Neck and face protection is pretty easy. Um, buffs are easily the most versatile piece of gear. Two buffs is a really good idea. One over the ears, you know, one over the neck. Um, eye protection is a big deal. What did you bring today? Yeah, we require both sunglasses and goggles for the race. Um, sometimes people will use a clear lensed sunglass or goggle um, or have a little mix of both or transition lenses are really popular for once the sun comes up as well. But you definitely want to make sure your eyes are protected even um, when you're not skiing downhill just because of the cold and wind and weather out there for a long race. Yeah, and a lot of what you can think about is that sun's going to start coming up at 6. So if you're planning on a 14-hour race, you have a full day in the sun. Uh, we'll talk about sunscreen stuff in uh, you know, the first aid kit, because that's also super important. But this is your basic hard goods that will get you through the Grand Traverse. Again, a lot of great shops in Colorado uh, rent this gear. So if you are used to being on a bigger setup, consider checking it out. I would also say if you're going to rent gear, though, you really want to get out for a long tour before trying a boot for the first time. So now is the time to think about that. We're still a few weeks out. 